We are starting with question number two. Explain how the following market structures address the central economic problem, what to produce, how to produce, and for whom to produce. Okay. <clears throat> how do the following market structures address the questions of what to produce? Are you able to see the marker that I'm using or I changed to, to ready? No, we are, we are able to see. I'm able okay. to see. What to produce, how to produce, and for whom to produce. These are the key questions that we have always when you are dealing with the economics, especially microeconomics. So okay. I already said that what to produce is a question that hinges around the decision making in the product that you are producing. Is it a service? But when we say, uh, is, it, is it really a service? Is it a good? Yeah. A product, when we say a product, <laughs> I know many people when they say, we say a product, they think of a tangible thing, all right? A tangible good, but it's not really what we are talking about. When you talk about a product, a product is general, okay? It can be a service or anything. Unless you say a good, a good now is different from a service. So now we are talking about a product. Which, which could be either a service or a good. So you, you get to decide what is it really that I'm going to do. On how to produce, you're answering the questions on technology. What mechanism am I going to use so that I can get what I want? And for whom to produce is the question of the market. Okay, it is the question mm -hmm. of the market. Like, what is my target market? Who is going to buy this, what I'm trying to produce and come up with? So now we are asking the question, okay, how do the free market, how does the capitalist economy or the free market economy decide on these three questions? How does the command economy, which is also called the socialist economy, get to decide or the, these, uh, these questions? How do they answer the following questions? So let's start with the, the first one, the free market economy. Oh, am I speaking so fast? <laughs> No, sir. I'm okay. I'm getting you. I don't know about Gertrude. Gertrude. Yes, sir. I'm getting you. Yeah, I'm asking about the speed. Am I, am I, am I okay? Are you able to get me? Or I'm speeding up? Okay. So, with the free market economy, just from the word free, okay, from the word free, it's a type of the market where these questions, okay? The questions on what to produce, how to produce, and for whom to produce are answered by the individuals, okay? So the individuals, that is to say the individuals, like the citizens themselves, okay? The, the, the players in the market, they get to decide what to produce, how to produce and for whom to produce. Those are individuals. Here, the government does not play a role. You're following, right? The government doesn't play a role. Those are key things that we have to understand. There is no government, it's a free economy. The, the, the government is not there to intervene in any way. So people get to decide on what to produce, what, who, for whom to produce and how to produce, okay? So the prices, the prices are determined, the prices and the quantity are determined by the forces of demand and supply, okay? In this market, the consumers themselves, uh, the, 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 the individuals plan on what they are going to produce, how they are going to produce it, and for whom they are going to produce. They decide on the price. What are we going to charge depending on the type of the market itself? I think we will look at the different types of the markets, right? If it's a perfect competition mm -hmm. where we have got many buyers and many sellers, obviously the mm -hmm. price and the quantity will be de determined by the forces of demand and supply because mm -hmm. the, the individuals or, or the producers will, will have no power over the price because there are many, there is a lot of competition that is in the perfect competition market. But if it is mm -hmm. in the monopoly market, the monopolist himself will decide uh, 
the price to charge on the product because they don't have any competition. You understand that? Eh? Mm -hmm. So they, they get mm -hmm. to, to ask themselves, what price, how much are we going to charge? Okay, the government is not there to say, okay, you guys charge this much. Okay, produce this much. Uh -uh. Okay, only the concept, question of remuneration, remuneration or paying of workers, okay? Mm -hmm. Like deciding the mm -hmm. salaries and wages. It is the same individuals that plan and decide. Okay, now we are producing this much. Okay, we'll be paying people this much. You understand? And when there is a free economy, you find that there are even a lot of variations in terms of the salaries that people get. Okay. Others get paid two penny, three penny, five penny, fifteen penny, ten. Depending on, yeah, like there is no uniform salary you get it because we have got different mm -hmm. individuals and they produce different uh, different things okay mm -hmm. sometimes we have got the, the challenges with this uh, with this same uh, type of market or economy uh, the, the, the main mm -hmm. challenge that we we may have sometimes is that um, some some things may be very difficult to produce especially costly to produce so they may not they may not manage to to have to, to produce the, the, the quality that is expected because of the limit, limitations in terms of the uh, of the I would say the, the, yeah the resources that, that they have they're not like the, the sovereign government you know the sovereign government the sovereign government has a lot of resources understand right? <clears throat> yeah. so what is there is that uh, these guys will just look at what they can manage and they will produce only what they can do at it they can manage to produce do we have okay. a question on, on 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 this one sometimes you are always afraid of the max now, it's one way of uh, it's one way of uh, of asking students sometimes a lecturer can be lenient that time whereby you just answer two points and explain just a few two points and you even get a lot of marks you are surprised so if you can say these key things that I've just said, you would have answered the entire question. Is that okay? Hello. 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 I'm there, sir. Oh, yeah. I, I heard people are, are not answering, so, so I thought maybe I was logged out. So that is about the, the free market. Is Madam Jove in? Oh, she's logged out. Okay. So, so basically, that's how you answer the, the, the question. If you can mention or say something around these key, th key concepts that I've said, you would have answered the question on how the free market economy decide on those questions. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Madam Jov, are you in the meeting now? Or still logged out? Hello, Madam Jo, are you able to get us? Hello, All sir. Right. Are you able to hear us? Yes, sir. Now I'm able to get you, sir. Yes. So I was saying these are just the key question, the, the key concepts that you mentioned. Okay. You mentioned that the question, these three questions are answered by individuals in the economy, okay? Just the individuals without the help of the government here. Just the individuals, the producers themselves get to decide, okay, on what to produce, how to produce, and for whom to produce. Then they decide on price, what to charge, they decide on quantity, they also decide on remuneration. Is that clear? Okay. Now, so what did you say on remuneration? Remuneration is, is, is uh, 
deciding on what to pay people, salaries and wages. So you decide on remuneration, you decide how much you should pay people. Like oh. the government doesn't come to tell you that, okay, pay people this much. Maybe they may, uh, yeah, there is no government here. Actually, it doesn't intervene. So you can be paying people what you, you think like paying them. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. The command economy now. Let's look at the command economy. The command economy. With the command economy is actually the opposite of the free economy. So here now, the questions on what to produce, for whom to produce, and how to produce are answered by the what? By the government, okay? So government, the government owns, production factors. Are we together? Yes. Hello. <clears throat> okay, so the government owns the production factors or the factors of production. So it is this government that owns the factors of production so since the government is the one that owns the factors of production, the government itself shall decide on what to produce, for whom to produce, and the, on how to produce the government itself. At this time, the government shall set the price. Okay? The government will set the, what, the price, and they will also set the quantity, you understand? They, 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 they will decide on how much they have to produce. They will also decide on how much to charge the people when they have produced whatever they have produced. Is that okay? Yes. Madam Jov, are you in now? Hello? Madam Since Jovo, can you, Dad. can you hear us? Yes, I'm back online. I'd lost network, sir. Oh, okay. We, we hope it will be better or it will be better. So yes. I was saying in this command economy, the government yes. itself decides on what to produce, for whom to mm -hmm. produce and how to produce. The government okay. owns the factors of production or the production yeah. factors. They are owned by the government. The government owns the industries this time, okay. th th in this economy. The government mm -hmm. owns the companies. The companies are parastatal companies this time around. Mm -hmm. And the, the government sets the price okay, of the goods. Like they set the price. Generally, everywhere you go, since it's one government, the, the, mm -hmm. the, the way how you buy milk anywhere in the whole country to be just the same. The quantity, the government will be deciding on how much they have to produce based on the number of citizens and uh, you know those things, right? So, and yeah. again, the government decides on remuneration. It's here, here is the government that decides even on remuneration. They decide how much they have to pay the people, okay, in this economy. So you'll understand that here the government is there. Is the one that takes the, an active role as a producer. It takes the active role here as the producer. It's mm -hmm. the one that allocates the scarce resources for people. It decides how many people to employ and everything is just done by the government. I think you can bear witness mm -hmm. to the truth. Some of you who were there during the days, uh, but I don't think there is someone who was there in this class. During the days of uh, Super K, Dr. KK. <laughs> and I don't think there's anyone I was. Uh, <laughs> okay, during our time. Uh, during yeah. our time. <laughs> <laughs> during our time with your KK. Uh -huh. You know what used to happen is that uh, the government would decide on the, the prices of everything. Okay. Yes. 
even uh, you would go and line up for for bags of mealy meal <laughs> to those government yeah. shops and everything so that is mm. what that's an example of a command economy or socialist mm. economy where the government is the one that takes an active role as a producer and uh, as an allocator of the scarce resources is that fair fair enough sir okay if that is fair is there any question here Gertrude, do you have any question? I'm passing question number two. We are done answering. No, sir. If we are done with the with question number two, I move to question number three, and you can see it's right on your screen. The question says, you, you pay attention now. We are, we, are, we are getting more serious. The question says, assume we have a budget. You have the budget of 36 kwacha to spend on pizzas, and hamburgers. The price or the cost of pizza is eight and the hamburger is four kwacha, right? Eight kwacha and four at four kwacha. So the question that we have here is that we are told 10 marks to complete the table, okay? We are supposed to complete the table here. So in short, we are supposed to fill in here where there is marginal, marginal utility. This is the total utility, okay? The, the, the column for total utility, which is the total satisfaction that consumers gain from whatever little or unit they have consumed of a commodity. Remember we explained the last time that always consumers aim at utility maximization. They want to make sure that they get the maximum sat satisfaction that they can manage to get from any commodity that they consume. Whatever total satisfaction they have, the aggregate satisfaction is called total utility, okay? So how do you compute marginal utility? So with marginal utility, it's easy. This first at unit number one, when the quantity, when, he, when he, the output is one at unit number one, total utility shall be equal to marginal utility. Did you get that? So at unit number one, but are, are you able to see the table clearly and the numbers? Yes, sir. Or I, or I zoom again. I'm able to see, sir. Maybe okay. get rid. I'm able to okay, see. So. All right, it's fine. So how do you get to have marginal utility? We said the, uh, the first the total utility, during the first unit, total utility is equal to what? Marginal utility. So you'll have 16 in there, okay? 16 in there. So how do you get marginal utility now by formula? Marginal utility is called change in total utility, which is total utility two minus C, total utility one divided by output, which means change in quantity of output. That is Q2 minus C, Q1, right? So change, change in output, the total change in output <clears throat> would be you will start like this. You say output two is what? It's 28, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yes. So you say 28, my or, or, or total utility is 28 minus 16 over the output is two minus one, right? Which will be 28 minus 16. What do we get? We get 12. We get 12? Yes, sir. So we write here 12 uh, on the second unit, right? One, two. Then the third one as well is the same formula. So you got the third, um, which is this 36, isn't it? 36 minus uh, 28 divided by uh, three minus uh, two, which is just as one. What do you get? 36 minus 28. We yes. Get eight. Eight. Okay. Eight, huh? Then then we when we go to we go to 40, right? 40 minus 36 divided by 4 minus 3. We get 4, sir. We get 4. 
And the last one you see 42 minus 40 divided by five minus C four, which will be two, right? Yes, sir. Yes, this is in obedience to the law of marginal utility. The law of marginal utility says that as total utility is increasing, then the marginal utility will be decreasing. As total utility is increasing, you've seen, as the total utility is increasing, then the marginal or additional satisfaction that you get from the consumption of an extra unit of a commodity decreases. Yeah, so this is what, what you're finding. You're finding that as total utility is increasing here, even the marginal utility is going down, you see, it's decreasing. Is that okay? Yes, yes sir. All right. And then we go to marginal utility over price. So these marginal utilities that we have gotten over the prices, the prices of pizza is eight kwacha. So you say 16 divided by eight, marginal sure. utility divided by price. So the price 16 divided by our price is eight. Eight. So we have two, right? Then 12 divided by two, by eight, sorry. The other one is 12 divided by eight. Twelve divided by eight, sir. Yes. One point five. One point five. Then eight into eight, obviously it's one, right? Yes, sir. Then it, Four divided by eighty, it should be zero point five, right? Four divided by eight, it should be zero point five, right? Zero point five, yes, sir. Yes, and the two divided by eight is what? Two divided by eight, yes, zero point two five, zero point two what? Two five. Two five. Is that fair enough? Yes, sir. Now, yes. Mm -hmm. I want to. I did not understand well how you were dividing for you to get uh, uh, these numbers here. Imagine a three the overprice. Which price are you using? Oh, this same price for for pizza. This is the price. The cost for pizza is the price. By the way, cost and the, and the price is, is the same. So the, the price that we are given here, they say pizza is eight kwacha, meaning that's a price. Okay, then marginal utility divided by price. They say marginal oh, utility, okay. comma, price. It's, it's just there, like uh, marginal utility, uh, price into marginal utility, right? Okay. Fair enough? Oh. Fair enough, sir. I understand now. Okay. Any other mm -hmm. question from anyone? Gertrude, are we okay? Yes, sir. Hey, my mic is on. <laughs> okay. Then we can quickly do it for, 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 for hamburgers. I think now it's the same process. We know it. So we start with so the 24. So this minus one, you said the total utility. Yes. When the unit is one, you said total utility is equal to marginal utility. To marginal so utility. Here yes. We have Twenty-four. Yes, it then, starts at the same point. Yes. Then here we we'll say, um, total utility, which is uh, total utility one, which is forty-four. Mm -hmm. Minus twenty-four mm -hmm. divided by one uh, divided by two minus one. Yeah, quantity, like that. quantity, what, quantity two what do we and get? quantity one. Yes, what do we get? Okay, I was trying. I was just trying to understand what you were doing at first. I think that's oh, where oh. I missed it in the first place. Oh, okay, okay. Yes, sir. So we get 20. Oh, we get 20. Okay. Yes. What do we get? 56 minus 44? We get 12. We get 12 for this one. 
We get eight. We get eight. And the 68 minus 64. Yes, we get four, right? We get four, sir. Mm -hmm. Then he divide by the price now. They have given you the price is four. So 24, four into 24. Yeah. Six, right? Six. And the five. Five. Yes. And Two. the three, right? Like four into 12 should be three, right? Three. Yes. And two. Two. And one. And one. Is that okay? <laughs> this is what I didn't know how to do. <laughs> you can imagine it. It is this simple. Yeah, it's it's even the formulas are there on top. Like you can just anyway, it's fine. Don't panic. It's well. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so okay. so now um, the question B is: Can you identify the combination of the pizzas and the hamburgers you should do purchase? Explain your reasoning. Okay, the optimal point always is given as uh, the point where marginal utility, marginal mm -hmm. utility over price of good X is equal to marginal utility over price of good what? Good Y. Did you get that? Say again, sir. The optimal point is given at the point where marginal utility of good X and the is overprice is equal to marginal utility of good Y. In this respect, you are talking about hamburgers. So the, where this marginal ma, marginal utility of uh, good do uh, what's this? Marginal utility of uh, marginal utility of a price of uh, pizza should be equal to marginal utility of uh, which one is this? The marginal good utility one. of uh, yes, which is the hamburgers. Okay, uh -huh. so we can identify those points. What points are they? But sir, you've interchanged. You've said marginal utility of good X over price. Yes, is, is equal, equal to, to marginal, marginal utility. utility over price of good Y. Of good 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 Y, yeah, it's 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 still the same thing. Where are these two oh. equal? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Where do they equal? Like where do uh -huh. they equal? So you okay. find that they equal at what? They equal at uh, they equal at when you the, when you produce. If you are to produce uh, three units of uh, pizza, right? And the five units of what? Of uh, hamburgers. Do we see that, oh, that, 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 that combination? Okay, yes, sir. I've seen it. They are also equal when we produce, we are also at optimal point if we can produce at uh, one unit of uh, pizza and uh -huh. the four units of uh, hamburgers. hamburgers. Okay. Are you following the reasoning? Yes, at these sir. two points, at, at these two points, we can mm. uh, we can produce. At these two okay. points, we can we can to, we can produce. But the question is, at what like the, the, which one gives us the, the 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 maximum utility? Is any of the two right? Would have yes, consumed sir. all our income. You understand, right? Mm. So yes, sir. Let me show you the budget constraint. The budget, the budget line is given as the, the price of uh, good X times the, the quantity of good X plus uh, the price of uh, good Y times the uh, good Y should be equal to income. Okay. That's the, 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 what's this? The budget line. That's the, the, the equation for the budget line, our budget. 
should be represented by that. We are following, right? Say again, <clears throat> say again, sir. Price of good X, which is in this respect, pizza times mm -hmm. the, the quantity of pizza, let's just say P, plus the price of uh, hamburgers, four times the hamburgers H, it should be equal to income. Our income is 36, right? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Now, we are, we are going to try these two points that we have identified. Which one is really uh, closer and closer to our budget? Did you get that? Okay. Yes, which one and which one is, we have gotten the quantities. We have said when, when, you have, when you, we start is with that, the, Is that unit three? Yes, at unit three, which is the unit three. So Peter is at yeah. unit three. Let, let me just change the marker. So it is eight, eight times what? Times three plus okay. four times the Peter is at unit three and the hamburger this is other at one, unit five. Unit five. Yes, yeah, sir. Okay. What do we get when we when we do the summation? We do the summation that is eight by three mm -hmm. will be 24. 24 then plus, two, plus, plus 20, 20 is 44. 44. 44. That's the, how much we need. Okay. Let's do for this other combination. What do we get mm -hmm. for this other combination? Which for the other combination. Say... The other combination will be five. Eight uh, times eight the first one. Times five. Eight times five. Eight times five. Yes. Which will be 40. Mm -hmm. Plus. Plus. Uh, which one? Which one is the same? Plus four times. Four times four. Four times uh, times four, which, which is, is 16. 16. Six, 16. So it's 40 yes. plus 16. How much is that? 56. 56. Yes, sir. Are you following, I? Eh? I am, sir. So, <clears throat> Madam Gertrude, are we together? Yes, sir. Okay, yes. So what has happened here is that when you get the combination, this one, because this marginal utility overpriced just gives you the maximum point where you get your utilities up, like you are just there. So okay. what, is, what is there is that when you produce 50, when you produce eight, five units of pizza and the three, mm -hmm. Is it four units of uh, hamburger? Uh -uh. There, there, there has been a mistake somewhere there. Okay. You have looked at util marginal utility. It's, it's a marginal utility of a price. So on the pizza one, it's eight times the, the unit should have been one. Did you see it? Only the second equation. Oh, yes. Yes. This so, tool that you have gotten, it should we get the one from marginal utility over price. It's the quantity is one. Have you identified okay. that? Yes, sir. So it will be eight, eight plus sixteen. Which is how much now? Twenty-four. Yes, which is what? Eh? Twenty-four exactly. Yes. So which one is the the combination of pizzas and hamburgers you should do purchase and explain your answer. So the combination of hamburgers and pizzas that you should do get is what? One unit of pizza and four units of what? Of hamburgers. Why should you get that? Because that is what is within your budget. I think it has been said several that you live within your means. 
<laughs> oh, that's a concept. The concept is you live within your means. You just have a 36 quarter. You can't start spending budgeting for 44 quarter. This other unit. If you get the, of course, utility. This, uh, what we are doing is just showing you where utility is maximum. Okay. okay. You, you can be uh, like, you can be happy, like to the maximum if you can get uh, three units of, uh, what's this? Uh, pizza, which mm -hmm. gives uh, us uh, MU over P1 and uh, mm -hmm. five units of uh, hamburgers. You can be happy. That's your just your desire, mm -hmm. but your budget, it's beyond your budget, you've seen. You just have a 36 yes. quarter, but this can lead you to, to 44. So the idea yes. is to spend within our means. Is that okay? okay. Uh, Any question? Okay. I've understood, sir. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything difficult? Nothing, you are sir. <laughs> okay. okay so we move to we move to this other one with the with the price of pizzas and hamburgers remain constant assume that your budget increases to six Imagine now that the budget has increased to what? To 60. Okay. Which one would we mm -hmm. identify the new combination of pizza and hamburgers? Obviously, we'll be able to, to get that one, isn't it? Yeah, we'll go for the 44 one. The one for 44. But now your income has increased, which means the combination will be what? Uh, mm -hmm. Three, three, uh, three pizzas, eh? three units of pizza, right? Where we have one here, and five units yes, of what? Eh? Hamburgers. Five units of hamburgers, yes, sir. And if I'm Do not you know, clear, you, you can tell me that, uh, but sir, you are not clear what you're saying. I like being so clear. I'm, fo I'm following, sir. Get rid. I'm Hello. Following, we are getting the inankins on the point where MU over P for pizza is equal to MU over P for what? For hamburgers. Where are they equal? Those are two points where we get the outputs, the quantities. You understand, right? Eh? And then the output should be put in the budget constraint. Our budget constraints price of the first commodity is eight times pizza plus mm -hmm. four times the hamburgers, it should be equal to our, what, our income. Now our income is 60. So it has increased to what, to 60. So the points mm -hmm. that we should choose, the optimal points are only where this condition is satisfied. And the, the only mm -hmm. points are where, when we get where M, like this, this MUP, MU over P are equal, you get them, right? Eh? They are equal for yes, unity yes. three, unity three um, of pizza and uh, the five units of hamburgers, right? It's one yes, one. Uh -huh. Get rid of your following. Yes, sir. And for, for the other one, they are equal to one unit of uh, pizza and the three, uh, four units of uh, hamburgers. That combination is possible as well. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Now you have to test it by your budget, of course, because those are just your desires. These are just your desires, but it's about also ability. So when you subject it to this constraint, then you get to know where your, your means end. Um, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So you will, you will do that one where you had said the price for for hamburgers was how much is eight times the, the quantity now for hamburgers where it is one is a three right where it is one here like we are following here where it is one and where it is yes, one sir. here 
mm. price uh, four times uh, the price for hamburgers. Uh, it's uh, the quantity is what five units. When you equate all the two, you have uh, twenty four plus uh, twenty, which is equal to what forty four kwacha. You still have a change. You have a sixty yeah. kwacha. Yes, uh -huh. there's actually a change of sixteen kwacha. So you are still mm -hmm. okay. These are the only points. So this idea of MU uh, over P is just to show you where the possible points where you can, you know, produce, uh, you can consume from. Those are only mm -hmm. possible points. You can't consume mm -hmm. at these combinations that are not equal. You've seen, huh? These are not yeah. equal, you can. Mm -hmm. So people have heard, you can move forward. Okay. Any question? Okay. Get rid. Do you have a question? No. It's so, also when we are explaining our reasoning. The, the, uh, you just say that's where M, this condition, that's where M U P of Hamburgers is equal to what? Marginal utilities. Uh, overprice of what of that at those optimal points and the subject to the constraint subject to the budget hey? our budget is represented by that uh, what's that the prices they say price of good x times quantity of x plus the price of good what y times the quantity of good y should be equal to what income so you can say it in words and the subject to income right subject to our our constraint we are able to do what to purchase or to consume at those points or with regards to our income we are able to consume we are able to afford those points okay you get it right so yes, i'll say it in words it is a point at which marginal utility over price of pizza it's equal to marginal utility mm -hmm. over price mm -hmm. of hamburgers. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And with regard to our what? To mm -hmm. our subject constraint mm -hmm. or okay. to our constraint or to our budget, we can afford this combination. And then okay. should be able to, to be fine. Clear? Okay. Clear, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is well. And okay. so, yeah, so that's that's how that's how it is. Actually, that's okay. how it is. Yeah, mm. that's how it is. It's not hard, I. Eh? Ah. Very mm. easy. <laughs> when well, I'm planning, it sounds like drinking water in a cup. Now when you <laughs> go there, when you remain you alone. <laughs> <laughs> When you remain alone, it changes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. so that's the reasoning behind that concept. Anyway, um, with your budget remaining at 60 quacha, assume mm -hmm. the price of uh, the price of pizza increased to 16 each. Complete the table again. I think you have you have known the, the, the logic. You just change where for pizzas now. You put a 16 over the price and you repeat the same methodology. Is that okay? So if the price of pizza changes is 16. to 16, yes, it's, it's, a, it's a eight, right? So you just change here, you put 16. Then you start again, you repeat the same process. You can compute the marginal utility oh, over price, so right? The, so meaning the quantity here, the, the total utility will be equal to marginal utility, which will yes. be six. And then we go just like that. So whatever we find yeah. now, then yeah. we so you compute here. this. Uh -huh. So then you, whatever you look we find at... here, then we go to marginal utility over price. Yes, where they they will equal now. So you pick those points, those levels of output. Then subject them to the budget, which will be this time will be sixteen p. Sixteen is now the price for pizza. Sixteen p plus what? The, the hamburgers are still constant. Four, four H is equal to what? To income, our income is 60. Then you will check where you are, you are fine. 
You understand, right? The same, the same way how we did it previously, it will just change that now, when you put 16 here, this column will change here. But this, the way of deciding will remain the same. This part will remain the same. Is that okay? Uh, yep. Yes, sir. <laughs> ah. Here, what I want to understand, sir, mm -hmm. where, where I usually have a problem is where, mm -hmm. when we start calculating, uh, total utility is equal to marginal utility with in the first unit. Mm -hmm. Then second unit will say 28 minus 16. Yes. To give you okay, the value that you put it. here. You put okay. here. You put so, here. You put here. Then you start dividing by 16. Now okay, the price has changed to 16. It will be 16 divided oh. by 16. The first one will be one here. Mm -hmm. Right. Then again, the second one, this one divided by 16. You have figures here, right? Also, mm -hmm. this side you have figures. Then check where they are equal. Those levels of output here, the levels of quantity where they are equal. Pick for hamburgers and for pizzas. And subject them mm -hmm. to this constraint. You will see which one is, is affordable. Okay. Is that okay? It is okay, yes. sir. Now, th 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 there should be something that I should be quick to mention. In case, when you compute mm -hmm. all of them, they fall within your means. But there mm -hmm. is that one, maybe, for example, your means is 60. The other, you find that the other one is 58. Then the other one is 44, right? Yes, sir. Then you should choose 58. That is closer to your your budget constraint that's maximizing your utility oh okay. you get it yes, yes don't you just aim at remaining with a lot of change without uh, yes you okay? okay yes i'm clear sir okay yes. get to you okay are you fine yes. or oh, you have started yeah you have started dozing <laughs> no, mm. no, I'm not busy. I'm fine. Yeah. So, so that's the reasoning behind this. I think you can easily now identify the pizzas and hamburgers in the same manner. Explain the law of demand. The law of demand states that there is an inverse relationship. That's all right. <laughs> right, we can't hear, we can't see. Okay. <laughs> it is states that there's a negative, okay? It's the same word, it means the same. There is an inverse relationship, right? Between what? Eh? Between the price and the, the quantity. of the commodity demanded. Is that clear? Hello? Yes, sir, clear. So, so there, there is an inverse relationship between the price and the quantity of the commodity demanded. That is to say, when the price increases, then the quantity does what? Reduce. And when the price reduce, quantity increase. They move in a, an opposite direction. I, I think you can bear witness to the truth. When the prices of some things become cheap, you see now people go buy, buy a lot. Yes, sir. People want to buy a lot of the things that are cheaper as compared to, yeah. But rationally, you should also pay attention to the quality right, for your own information. Don't yes. just rush for something that is cheap. Also bear, bear in mind, it has the quality. Your focus is the quality. Has the quality. Is the quality still up there? Not just rushing for cheaper things, all right? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. End of the question. We have answered two questions and it's over one hour. Any question?
I'm hearing that uh, the, the exams will be, oh, 